Hey golfers, I'm Thomas Campbell and I'm joined by Jackie Johnson. We are both master club fitters at the Second Swing Minnetonka store. Today we're going to be talking about ball speed and how to increase your ball speed and what really influences ball speed. So Jackie, what has been the number one thing that you've noticed in fittings that's influenced ball speed? Well, club head speed is one, and then obviously hitting the center of the face is, is two. So, you know, you want to be able to generate a lot of speed, but also be able to make contact center of the face. Exactly. And yes, club speed is potential distance, but where the real, real money is at is in hitting it in the middle of the club face. So I'm holding driver in my hands. The number one way to generate ball speed is by catching it in the sweet spot. You catch it right in the center, there's no doubt you're going to increase your ball speed. But if you catch the ball on the toe, you catch the ball on the heel, the bottom or even the top of the club, there's going to be some dramatic losses in ball speed. Yeah, I think you see that, especially a lot with amateur golfers. Um, there's a reason why there's more forgiving you know, drivers, for example. It's because the sweet spots are bigger, so you're not going to lose as much ball speed when you do miss hit it. But like, for example, if I'm going to hit it off the heel or toe or thin or fat or whatever, Definitely going to see a huge dramatic change in that. Yeah, the, the MOI for sure has definitely increased a lot with the new drivers, and that's been the real focus on the last few years because, let's face it, there's limitations on how fast the ball can come off the club face because there's no real spring effect on, on drivers anymore. Uh, but even moving the ball by just even one or two inches from the middle to the toe to the heel, you will still see a dramatic loss. Not only with a driver, but it's also important with irons too. If you catch the ball fat with an iron, you catch the ball thin with an iron, heel or toe is, again, it's going to be dramatic influence as well. Yeah, I think you see, especially with irons, that for me anyways, you go from hitting like a blade, if I were to hit a blade versus something a little bit more forgiving, the differences of miss hits is, is huge with ball speed. So. Yeah. And you also mentioned a blade versus a more forgiving iron. More forgiving irons, they have less loft on them. What's well, also going to influence distance and ball speed? The loft of the golf yeah. club. So if you have a golf club that has a lot less loft on it, you're going to generate more ball speed. If you have more loft on the club, you're going to generate less ball speed. And you just see that if you're hitting numbers with, say, your pitching wedge. Pitching wedge, say, has 45 degrees of loft on it. You're only going to hit that ball as far as the pitching weight is going to go because the loft is going to cause more spin and you just don't get as fast your ball speeds off the face. As you move up through your bag, as the club gets longer and then there's less loft on it, that's when you start seeing that ball speed increase and that's because there is less loft on the club. Right. And finally, before we get you to hit some shots today, Jackie, we'll talk about a little formula. Generally speaking, every mile an hour of ball speed is going to equal two yards. So if you're able to just to even increase your ball speed by five miles an hour, you're gonna pick up 10 yards with your driver. So that's, that's huge. And as I mentioned, just by moving it to the middle of the face or even close to the middle of the face, that is gonna be the number one way to generate that ball speed. So for today, I'm gonna to get Jackie to do some testing for me. We're going to collect some data. I'm gonna get Jackie to hit some good shots. And I'm also gonna get Jackie to hit some bad shots. Intentionally or unintentionally? <laughs> Hopefully it's unintentionally. But we're going to get you to hit some shots off the heel, off the toe, catch it fat, catch it thin, and we'll just talk about the differences in the losses of ball speed and also the gains of ball speed. Are you ready to hit some shots? Yeah, I'm excited to see the, the results, so let's go. Try to hit it off the toe there. So, Jackie, we got you to hit some intentional bad shots and good shots, just to talk about the differences. So we have thin, toe, heel, heavy, and center strikes. Yep. Uh, we take a look at your club speed numbers. Notice we're all within about half a mile an hour to a mile an hour difference. So there's really no difference there. But let's talk about the ball speed. So ball speed, as I mentioned, that's where the money's at. If you have a higher ball speed, the ball is going to go further. So let's talk about the center strike first. Center strike, we'll notice that your, uh, your ball speed there was right at 100 miles an hour. If your club speed at 73.2, it gave an efficiency number of 137. Carry 136, go on 146. That was a very well struck shot. The ball flew higher, 43.6 degree landing angle at 71 feet uh, in height. So that was a good shot. 
Now let's go to the other end of the spectrum. So let's go to a heavy strike, just to show the, the difference here. So we'll notice your club speed, same club speed, but what you'll notice is you lost 14 miles an hour there of ball speed. Your efficiency number dramatically dropped to 1.18. Uh, you'll notice carry distance and total distance dropped dramatically. We're talking quite a, quite a difference there. We're talking you lost about 35 yards of carry distance. The ball chased out more because it had less spin on it, but if you're trying to carry a bunker or trying to carry the ball on the front edge of the green, it's probably obviously not going to work out too right. well. Right, yeah. So that's just, that's just showing the difference on ball speed on a center strike versus a heavy strike. I also mentioned uh, if you catch the ball on the toe, on the heel, or if you catch it a little bit thin, you're also going to notice some differences here in losses in ball speed and, and spin and everything like that. So let's first talk about the thin shot. The thin shot, you'll notice your ball speed at 94.2. Well, it wasn't too bad. Uh, what I find interesting is, yeah, 1.30 with the, with the smash factor, but the most interesting thing is the spin. So you catch the ball low on the face, the ball's going to spin more. So it didn't go as far, but we notice it stopped pretty quick because of all that spin on, on the ball. Um, if you also take a look at another, uh, another shot here, you'll notice the toe shot. It's interesting that the toe shot, it retained ball speed. So a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll tell when I'm in fittings or if I'm working with a player, I'll say, if you're going to miss the middle of the face, you want to catch it maybe slightly high toe with the driver or catch it slightly on the toe side because it's going to be much better than the heel. The yep. heel is no good. You're right. going to lose a lot, of, uh, a lot of ball speed off the heel. But the toe, there's, it just, you get away with it. There's like a little bit of a sweet spot, especially with the driver on the high toe of part of the driver. And we'll get you to hit some drivers here soon. And then the heel, we'll notice the heel, 1.25 uh, with the efficiency, uh, ball speed down at 91.9. Um, so your, your carry distance, you lost carry distance and, and total distance. So the range, if we take a look at the range here in ball speed, um, your heaviest, your heavy shot lost the most ball speed, lost the most efficiency, and lost the most carry distance. Your heel shot was also next Worse off essentially, you notice your ball speed at 91.9, efficiency 1.25, and then carry 113, go 135. The thin shot was next, 94.2 ball speed, efficiency 1.30, and then you would take a look at 124, go on 132. But then you got the toe and the center strike. So you'll notice those two, your ball speed was pretty good 98.3 with the toe, 100.2 with the, the center strike. And that's why the ball went significantly further. So this is just touching on really the, the importance of catching it in the middle of the club face. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, when taking a look at all these numbers, it's, it, it's relevant to note that, like, the ball speed, how efficient you are with your ball speed relates to pretty much every other number down the line, right? So, like, the better the ball speed, obviously, the more distance you're going to get, right, the more spin you're going to get. I mean, it just, it's all in relation to each other. Um, one thing I've been working on in regards to my ball speed is all of my misses generally, if I'm not going to hit the center, is going to be the toe. Um, you know, when I was younger and not as informed, I think a lot of my misses were off the heel, which is why, you know, I wasn't as good. I mean, that, it, it makes a huge difference in where you miss the club face. Um, so definitely knowing where to miss is, is, is big, but also obviously efficiency in, in ball speed is, is really big in terms of how accurate you are. So Right. And with an iron, there is a hustle on the iron. No one wants to ever hit that no. <laughs> dreaded S word, the shank. Uh, if you catch that, that shank, the ball is obviously going to go pretty far right and it's going to be a, a bad shot. If you catch it on the heel, you're bringing that part of the club into play. And I, what I noticed when we did this, trying to get you to collect the data, is you had no problem hitting the ball in the center or off the toe. Yeah. But when we tried to get you to catch it on the heel, we took a few shots. Yeah. We, we, had, we had took a few shots for us to collect that data to show a shot off the heel. Uh, just because you're ingrained to hit Not the ball in the that. middle of the face, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is important. Uh, iron fittings, we, we talk about landing angle and height. So before we hit driver, I just want to touch on 
the height. Notice the thin, the toe, and the center. Notice that height difference there, 67, 70, 71. Landing angle, we're talking 44 degrees with the, with the landing angle. Catch the ball off the heel or heavy, you'll notice what happened to that landing angle and the height that dramatically decreased. Yeah. yeah. Okay, can you do the same thing for me now with driver? Yep, let's go. So Jackie, we intentionally got you to hit some good shots with the driver and some off the heel and the toe. What was the most challenging part of this exercise? Trying to hit it off the heel. <laughs> yeah. It took me a while to get one to go off the heel. Um, Cause like I was saying before, hitting it off the toe is just what I've ingrained myself to do if I'm gonna miss it, just cause I know that the miss isn't gonna be as bad. So trying to get myself to actually go the opposite way of what I've trained my mind to do is a little harder, but um, it's interesting to see the the numbers here on, on those miss hits though, because it, it definitely is true on why I've trained myself not to do that, so. Yeah, and I would also say one of the hardest things for us to collect data was catching in the middle too, because yeah. what felt like the middle to you was slightly on the toe. Yeah. And the center strike strikes were, for you were actually slightly on the toe, and those are the, the best best strikes. Now they weren't way out on the toe, yeah. but your best shots were just slightly high toe. And then I can kind of bring that up here if we look at what we have listed here as, as Sandra Strikes. This was kind of your, your, your hit location yeah. that was more consistent and went the furthest for you. Which, as I mentioned earlier, slightly high toe, that is, that's the good spot on the driver to miss if you're not going to hit in the middle of the club face. Yeah, and having, you know, the Sim Max in my hand, I mean, the forgiveness is definitely there with that club, so it makes sense as to why I would feel like it's in the center, even though it's slightly off, just because of the forgiveness there in the club. Right. Yeah, if we take a look at the numbers, so when you were hitting it in the center of the face, you notice your carry distance, 210 going, 240. I know you've mentioned 240 is you know, pretty close to your, your driver numbers. Yep. When you caught it slightly on the toe, What's really interesting is the, the carry distance you dropped slightly and total distance dropped slightly, but it was pretty similar. The ball kind of chased out still for you. It actually chased out just a little bit more than the center strike. And the spin rate was pretty low with both of those. You can see slightly on the toe is going to generate a lot less spin. We move over to the heel side, like the low heel, notice here, 31.29. So your spin rate went up by about 1,500 RPMs, which is quite a lot. Yeah. Um, we'll notice that uh, carry distance, you know, you drop dramatically when you caught a little hollow on the heel and on the heel or, or heavy. But coming back to ball speed, ball speed is, well, the, the main focus on this video is, and we'll notice how it was influenced. You can see when you hit the ball on the toe or even the center, look at the ball speed number. Actually, it was slightly faster off the toe than it was off, off the center. Um, you were also swinging just slightly faster there, but yeah. you notice your efficiency numbers, 145, 144, were really good when you hit it off the middle or off the, off the toe. We started noticing that efficiency number dropping a little bit. We noticed the low heel, 1.42, 121 ball speed. Uh, we take a look at the heel shot, 114, 134 efficiency. And then heavy, that one you kind of got heavy and sky the ball a little bit. 114 ball speed, 134 efficiency, and lost quite a bit of distance. I'm going to bring up the hit locations just to kind of show the, those shots. So when you hit enough the toe, this is where we were looking at with regards to hit location. As I mentioned, center is a little bit closer, but it was you know, slightly high toe. Yep. Low heel, this is what we were talking about, what, what, the, what the low heel strike was. There's your, your heel strike. It was a little bit higher heel. Um, you notice the launch angle was higher versus uh, low heel, which was lower. And then the heavy strike was actually in the middle, but you just hit the ground first and yep. kind of popped it up a little bit. You'll notice what happened to launch angle it was 21 degrees um, ball speed drop. So yeah, hit location is really important. It's a huge influence on ball speed. Uh, ball speed, as I mentioned, it's where the money's at. You can generate ball speed by, well, swinging faster. If you generate more club speed and you're still efficient with your swing, you're going to have more ball speed. 
Loft on the golf club, if you have less loft on the golf club, you're going to generate more ball speed. So naturally, if you're going to hit a seven iron versus a pitching wedge, your seven iron is going to have more ball speed on it, even if you're going to swing with the same club speed. And then finally, hit location. Let's face it, if you hit it in the middle of the club face, you're going to hit the ball further, you hit the ball further because you are getting a lot more ball speed. Yeah. So a couple other ideas that I've got just to finish off here to help you find the middle of the club face. I recommend Dr. Scholl's foot spray. Just to, if, you're, if you're at the driving range by yourself, you can, what you can do is you can spray the driver head or the, or the iron, hit a shot and it'll show exactly where you hit it on the club face. Just to train yourself, get the idea of where you're hitting on the face. You can also get face tape as well. At, we use face tape a little bit. Or if you're using TrackMan, you can see the hit location on the screen here as well. If you don't act, have access to all the data, just by putting some kind of sticky tape or putting spraying some on the club face is going to be really important to help train and find the middle of the club face. What else can influence the middle of the club face? The length of the club, right? Yep. If you're fitted for the wrong length driver or wrong length irons, you may catch the ball more on the heel or more on the toe. And by adjusting the length of, the, of those clubs may help you and be a bit more beneficial. Even if you sacrifice losing length on the driver shaft, as I mentioned, club speed's more potential distance. You may lose club speed, but you may actually end up gaining more ball speed. Yeah, that's exactly actually what I went through when I was hitting my original. I had the Ventus Red in there that was longer, so it was at you know 45 and 45.75. And so what I tend to see was that I was hitting it more heel because of that length. And so I actually went to 45 in this Tentai Blue, and that's where now I'm seeing myself if I'm going to miss hit off the toe. So, and I do use spray to kind of help me when I'm on the range to kind of make sure that I, I'm getting that, you know, right gauge. Um, but the length of it has definitely helped me be a little bit more efficient um, in my driver swing. Uh, and so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really important. Hitting in the middle of the club face, no matter how you do it, whether that's standing close to the ball, standing further away, adjusting the length, changing your posture, it's really important to hit the middle of the face. It's going to give you the best chance to get the most ball speed in the end. Yeah. So viewers, if you love our discussion on ball speed today, make sure to stay tuned for all our other videos coming, other TrackMan data we'll be talking about. So mentioned ball speed is where the money's at, but there's plenty other data that we'll talk about in a club fitting at second swing. While you're at it, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for our next video.